Hello, statistics and pre-calculus. Now that we have found these elusive square roots and cube roots out in the wild, it's time to identify them, to pull out our field guides and see what kind of equation was that? What does it look like? Is it all good? Continue with the safari. First off, it's important to make sure that we got these reflections pretty good. Good. Here are some square root graphs, and they reflect in different ways, and so you want to be totally clear which kind of square root graph you're dealing with. Here's the parent function, y equals the square root of x. If I reflect by making the whole function negative, you get the lower half in the fourth quadrant. The y's become negative, the x's stay the same. You can see that from this equation. The y's become negative, the x's stay the same. On this equation, the x's become negative, but the y's stay the same. So that pops over here. And again, that's the one that's sometimes challenging. If you think about how can you take the square root of a negative number, well, you're not taking the square root of a negative number. If x was negative 4, for instance, then negative of negative 4 is positive 4, and you're taking the square root of positive 4, so you get there. And then last but not least, if you make the x negative and the y negative, you pop down to the third quadrant, where both the x is negative and the y is negative. So you have four versions all together of your square root function, and you want to say, hey, which one am I looking at? And that'll tell you, are my x is negative, or my y is negative, or both. Here x is negative, here y is negative, here both. Cube roots, on the other hand, are kind of interesting. There's your parent function. If you take it and make the x's negative, if you flip the x's, it flops over that way. And so the x's are negative. The point that was 8, 2 is now negative 8, 2. On the other hand, if you make the y's negative, it goes here which you might be forgiven for thinking looks exactly the same as the other. Curiously enough, the point that was 8, 2 is now 8, negative 2. But that other point here that used to be negative 8, negative 2 is now the point negative 8, positive 2. So indeed, they are exactly the same. What happens if you make both x and y negative? You get back to where you started. Lovely. So there are really only two choices here. One is that they become negative. One is, or there's the reflection could be treated either as a reflection of the x's, where the x's become negative, or as a reflection of the y's, where the y's become negative. I think it's often most easy to work with this one with the negative sign there. Now we are ready to take on some of these lovely graphs. Take a look here. What is the parent function? Is this square root of x or cube root of x? I'm sure you can pause and think for a minute. This is obviously a cube root of x. Is it reflected? No. That's the same going the same direction as as the normal square root. Is it dilated? Well, here's the thing. From here, the point that used to be 0 0 I went up one and over one, which is exactly the same as I would, and down one, left one, which is exactly the same as you would have done on the parent function from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So no, no dilations, either in the x direction or the y direction. We'll get to some later as we go on. It is translated, however, and this is where you're looking at this key point, the inflection point where the curvature changes. That's the point that used to be at 0, 0. So now we have gone to the right one, and down 2. That's all we need for our equation. y minus 2, y plus 2, equals the cube root of x minus 1. Or y equals cube root of x minus 1 minus 2. Either way is totally legit. All right, moving on. What do we have here? What's the parent? This one's the square root, obviously, because you're only looking at part of it. Is there a reflection? Think back to those pictures. Which way is this going? This is going down and to the left. So that is actually reflected in both x and y. In this case, however, as we go from this point 1 and 1. We're still only going over 1 and 1, so there's no dilation. And it is translated right to 4. 
So my equation, y equals the y's become negative and the x's become negative, and it's a negative of x minus 4. Make sure that the x minus 4 is in parentheses here because that has to be there, and then you make it negative as it's doing the dilation because the x minus 4 sits together as the translation. You could uh, technically make this minus x plus 4 by distributing that minus sign, but I think that makes it harder to see exactly what's going on. So they're both there. You can test it out on your favorite graphing tool to see. Think about this one for a minute. What's the parent? Is there reflection, dilation, translation, and then the equation? If you want to pause and do it yourself, you can, and I will continue now doing it from here. The parent, square root of x. We're starting here and going up and to the right, so there is no reflection. There is a dilation, however. Instead of going up 1 and right 1, we've gone up 1 and right 3. So that's by 3 in the x direction. It is translated also up 2. So my equation, y equals the square root is the parent, x over 3 for the dilation, and plus 2. Or y minus 2 is square root of 1 third x, if you prefer that version. And we've got all those piece possibilities, or there you could combine those in slightly different ways. Anything that's equivalent is good. Hope you got one of those. One more, four of them. That way it fits nicely on two pages, two to a page. Ready? Again, you can take a look at this and pause and see if you can figure it out on your own and then double check. But here we go with the solution. What is the parent? Cube root, because of the shape. Is there a flexion? Yes. Instead of starting low and going higher, it starts high and gets lower. Is there a dilation? Yes, indeed. Instead of 1 and 1 in the x direction, it's 1 and down 2, or up 2 and left 1. So yes, by 2 in the y direction. Or you could think of it, you could combine these and call it by negative 2 in the y direction, if you like. And it is indeed translated up 3. So y minus 3 divided by negative 2 for your dilation is the cube root of x. Or, if you prefer, y equals negative 2 times the cube root of x plus 3. All good. You figured out how to find equations for these lovely graphs that you've found. You've identified them. You can check them off on your list, and I will see you at the next safari.